All right, this is KXP FM Seattle. I'm Greg Vandy in the Roadhouse, and it's a pleasure to have John Craigie here. The big meow begins today. All the massacres are dripping away one by one, one by one. I watch it down. Shows no mercy. Everything needs to drink. I ain't never been this tasty in my life. And I can't remember who I wrote, wish you were here to. But in the end, it's true. All around, and my window is open wide. I got no one on my mind. Come on and look. Best one, it's true. I'm just trying to say something new, trying not to sound like every other man. I ain't done these drugs in a while, but I'm down to match your smile. I'll just ride it out, but you know how I am. Going out for a thing, well, it ain't my usual thing, but you know. Sometimes it comes a rain If my window is open wide I got no one on my mind Come on and look me up while I'm there I've been going through the motions It's like a vast dead ocean Billions of drops But I got no urge to swim I've been braving all the winners I've been trying to save the sinners But I keep on forgetting Exactly what's considered a sin Out here it's a Costco of men Why you chose me I never understand But whatever it takes to kick the darkness out All in my window is open wide I got no one on my mind Come on and look me up While I'm down While I'm down Uh, this next song is called Let's Talk This Over When We're Sober and Not at Burning Man. I wrote this song at Burning Man, walking past a couple, arguing. I heard the guy say to his girl, honey, let's talk this over when we're sober and not at Burning Man. I thought that was pretty deep, so the song came out. I know you want to have a real serious chat right here, right now Inside of our tent, oh baby Don't you know that I understand Yeah, but this really ain't the best time and place Let's use one of the other 358 days Let's talk this over when we're sober and we're not at burning man i know you want to complain about your roommate again because she never ever does any of her dishes how all she needs to do is just leave that no good man oh but i just want to talk about planets and stuff 
in high on much techno sucks. Let's talk this over when we're sober and we're not at burning man. I know that you think that I smoke too much pot. I know you think my lazy ass friends should all get jobs. Trust me, I know what I told you, Grandpa looks kind of like a pug. You got real man. But you have got to admit Maybe he kind of sold it does But never mind, baby That's not the point Because we're talking over When we're sober And we're not at Burning Talk about the bills we have. Don't want to talk about your issues with your mom and your dad. I don't want to talk about how, under no circumstances, should I ever, ever wear jean shorts. Oh, yeah, but maybe it's okay if I cut them off at the ends. I don't really want to have this conversation. Come on, baby. Let's go climb on some crazy ass art. Oh, 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 oh. And there is so much that we can process, girl, when we get back to that old default world. But for now, honey, let's just enjoy this party while we can. Oh, now we could talk about some serious stuff, but I hear there's a wooden man that they're about to blow up. Let's talk this over when we're sober. We're not at Burning Man. Oh, yeah, you know, we could redefine our relationship. Or we could make love on top of that pirate ship. Let's talk this over when we're sober. And we're not at Burning Man. Let's talk this over when we're sober. And we're not at Burning Man. John Craigie in the Roadhouse on KXP from his album Live, uh, the live album called Opening for Steinbeck. That is, uh, let's talk this over when I'm. Is that what it's called, John? What's, what's, what's the song called, John? Uh, I think t- sometimes when I got to make the album, that's when you have to actually name the song. <laughs> I usually put it to the last minute. So I think the folk singer rule is whatever you say the most often, that should be the title. That's right. So <laughs> technically speaking, it should be called Let's Talk This Over When We're Sober and Not a Burning Man. But I think for the purposes of. Uh, Spacing. I think I just said, let's talk this over, comma, when we're sober. Yeah, the folk process right there. Right there. And the first song was While, While I'm Down from the new album called Scarecrow. Yeah. I realize there's like three different kinds of John Craigie albums. There's the album with the live band, with the with the full band. There's the uh, album with just you and guitar, yeah. which is Scarecrow. And then there's the live record. Yeah, for a while there it was just the two, but then uh, last year I decided to try that out. <coughs> there's a, there was a studio in Portland where I live that had a bunch of analog gear. I had these sort of 10 sad songs that didn't seem like they would fit on a studio band album. And I thought it'd be cool to do like an all analog record. So, and I liked how that went. So I think that'll become a tradition. Maybe every few years or every five years, I can kind of get these outtakes that have no home and put them on a thing like that. It was a really nice project. So, so I've not been to Burning Man before. And that last song is you. Uh, going to burn, and it seems like you performed at Burning Man according yeah. to the version on the live record. Yeah, and it's hilarious your introduction to that song because you talk about people think uh, Burning Man is getting less cool because the moms and grandmas are going. Yeah, yeah, and that's your target demographic. Exactly, exactly. Well, I noticed that when you're like me at Burning Man, they don't give you the cool slots. You know, you're either playing at 9 a.m. or 2 a.m. You're either playing to people on no drugs or every drug. You know, and you're just sort of like. Can I play to people on just one drug? And they're like, no, 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 you got to do these. So you get these weird slots. And that 9 a.m. slot, you think no one's coming, but then some grandma peeks in. She's like, this is what I'm looking for. And that's, you know, you get all these people come. You get the moms and grandmas. They're they're all about that early slot. So I have found more so than any other festival, because, you know, all the cool kids are out at the the DJ set way deep in the in the playa. So I've been enjoying that factor of Burning Man. as it, And I think it just also makes it more diverse. When I first started going, it was just sort of the same type of people. And now you've just seen all kinds of, you know, from nerds to 
you know, uh, sort of like people who are really into building things and people who are into like sculptures and then you get your uh, sort of more, uh, yeah, the art people who do a great art. It's really cool to see the diversity. Yeah. You know, the album's so great, and I'm, I've become a huge fan quite rapidly Thank with you. you. I didn't really know much about you until you were at Pickathon this past year. And uh, now I've been checking out your records, and the the live record opening for Steinbeck is so great because of the introductions and the monologues are, are hilarious. And, Thank you. and even the title makes a lot more sense to me now that I've heard you talk about the sort of universal feeling of opening for other artists. Yeah. Yeah, I found that, um, especially these past two summers opening for Jack Johnson, you know, which was such a huge, like, uh, I don't want to say disparaging, you know, but it was, it was big. It's a big difference from what I do to what he's doing. You said it was 19,500 more than, uh, than <laughs> exactly, exactly. play for. Yeah. Well, I did do the gorge, you know, uh, two, uh, two July's ago. And that was the biggest crowd I've ever played for. And I remember, uh, talking to Jack ahead of time. He called me up. He said, do you want to do these shows? And he was a big fan of my, First live a album, uh, Capricorn and Retrograde, just kidding, live in Portland. And he just said, he said, I said, do you want me to have a band, Jack, or what do you want? He said, no, I want you to do the thing you did on the live album. I was like, Jack, that was for like 200 people at Mississippi Studios in Portland. And he goes, I was like, you want me to do The Gorge? He's like, well, think of it this way. If 1% of the audience is into you, that's still more than that show. And I was like, thanks for putting it into perspective, Jack. I appreciate that. But he was right, you know, and at the Gorge, it was great. I mean, it, that's that's 22,000, I think, or something. And and it was, you know, it was a great crowd. And, and there are plenty of people who were still finding their seats, but plenty of people, you know, more than 200 that were that were locked in. So his crowd was was really kind. But you get that feeling of of opening feels weird, but everyone's used to it. And the reference on the album is sort of um, I, I appreciate music having that sort of uh, setup because no other art form does that. And I, I joke and say that you don't buy Grapes of Wrath and open it up and then there's a short story by John Craigie that you got to read first, you know, before you can get to the Steinbeck and because I'm opening for Steinbeck. That's, you know, so I think I really have always appreciated that, you know, you don't go see Mona Lisa and some guy has his sketchbook. He's like, you got to look at me first. And, right. And maybe they should have that, but <laughs> yeah. until yeah. then. Yeah. It's great to have you here. How about another song? Yeah. This is going to be something from the new album against Scarecrow. Yeah, this is a song called Don't Ask and this is sort of a... Um, an observation of the uh, relationship that we have usually with our exes and when we see them in public. And you can look at it in a more nasty way, but I find uh, ideally if you can get over the, the any kind of bitterness or negativity, then you can just have that normal, awkward interaction that you have with an ex, uh, which I just think is so it's such a funny, there's no protocol for it. Because you're not friends, you're not enemies, you're not lovers, you're just two people who have to ignore the fact that they used to hug naked all the time, you know. <laughs> And now you just you're just like, hey, so that's kind of what this song's about. Oh, hold on, I didn't put my I see harmonica in the Like this. me if I'm lonely, baby, you know I'm lonely, if I wasn't lonely, then I wouldn't be talking to you, I'm trying to drink this poison and see if it'll kill me, I used to have immunity, but now I don't know what it'll do, yes, and you don't know where I've been, I was just a canvas back then, but now I'm dripping with paint. I ain't old, baby, I'm brand new Don't ask if I've been writing, baby You know I ain't been writing If I've been writing Then I wouldn't be talking to you I'm trying to board this train wreck I used have a ticket for the best shit I ever written the honey it's all been coming from you yes so don't shut me up it ain't like it was I shed some layers I ain't old baby I'm brand new ooh, 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 ooh.
miss my bed. Why the hell would I miss my bed? In this world, it got a lot of beds, and I don't mind trying them all. Some are full of sadness, and some ain't got no blankets, but some are like heaven, honey, more than I could ever pull. Yes, I've been raining long, I keep on rolling on that old cocoon is dead and John Craigie in the Roadhouse on KXP. That one's called Don't Ask from the brand new album called Scarecrow. He's going to be uh, tomorrow, Thursday, in Eugene at the Wow How, uh, Wow Hall, and then Friday in Bend at the Domino Room, and then Saturday in Portland where he lives at the Aladdin uh, Theater in Portland. Good to have you here, John. Thanks, man. It's yeah. good to be here. Uh, you talk about in the uh, live record opening for Steinbeck that a lot of your new Jack Johnson fans who saw you at the shows come to see you at the merch table and thought your name was Gravy. Yeah. <laughs> John Gravy. Yeah, I learned to get better at um, introducing myself. The first show I did with Jack were over on the East Coast in the, those big arenas out there. And I was uh, overwhelmed. as you, you know, I wasn't too nervous, but I was just, uh, I had not played to that crowd before. But it was the first show I did in New Jersey where I think I just said my name once. And then had everyone come to the merch table. <clears throat> and one guy, he's, he called me Gravy. And I said, it's Craigie. And he pointed to the crowd. He was like, all 20,000. He said, everyone thinks it's Gravy, bro. And I was like, oh, man. So now it has become sort of a fun joke. With each live album, there's sort of something I find that, that the fans take away. And then that becomes the heckle of the year. So I get, I was joking this year at Thanksgiving. I was having it with my friends Shook Twins and their family. And, you know, whenever there was a... Pass the gravy, John Gravy. <laughs> I said, well, this is my second Thanksgiving after the John Gravy bit has been created, so <laughs> I'm dealing with it, yeah. but it's fun. Yeah. I like how you are not shy to identify as a straight-up full singer. Yeah. And you also use the phrase topical songwriter, which <clears throat> you know impresses me because not everyone even knows what that is anymore. And uh, you, you say those kind of songs translate better you know, to the live audience instead of like on a record. Uh, yeah. So when people go see your live shows, they're going to, see some of my favorite songs that you do which are the topical songs yeah i think that that's important i mean all the guys that i was really inspired by as a kid were like woody guthrie <coughs> bob dylan tom paxton i was listening to all these like 60s folk singers who were very topical for the time which was very inspiring to me but i grew up in the 90s um where I, that wasn't that hip and so you, i was listening to like a lot of pearl jam you know with all due respect in the in the hometown and a lot of uh nirvana and um Soundgarden, you know, all those things that was really nice in the 90s. But I wasn't feeling a lot of topicality on the record. And so when I started getting introduced to these other more songwriter vibes, that was really inspiring to me. And, I, and by the time I started getting into it myself, I felt that there was this huge opportunity to talk about what was going on. Yeah, and the, the thing about these 60s topical songwriters was that they're funny. Yeah. Like they use yeah. a lot more humor than, say, back in the, uh, in the 40s and back in the day. You know, yeah. the, like... All those Dylan ones are really super funny. Yeah, I think, and that was, I was always, I was funnier before I was musical. I, as a kid, I was class clown. I won class clown, you know, for junior high. Uh, superlatives, I think they call those. And class wits, they called it at Catholic school. You, you want to be nice and not use the word clown. But um, So I was always something that was, came more naturally to me. So when I started performing in front of crowds, I wasn't that good musically. But I had, I had, I knew how to tell a story and how to make them laugh and, uh, and I saw how that would open them up. You know, you would sort of see them become more vulnerable to you. And then you could give them that punch, whatever, whether it's a, something very sad, poignant, something that's very political or topical. More so than I think um, if you came with more anger or more sort of, then you would start to see people get closed off, which sometimes you're really angry, you know. Um, I think uh, in 2016, po post-election, I, I went on tour and people were angry and sca sad and scared. I found that, that's when the humor was most important because you could sort of you could sort of break down that barrier a little bit and then we could all kind of have our th group therapy session you know it seemed that way at least and still seems that way sometimes yeah yeah 
It's great to have you here. Yeah, thank you. What's the next song going to be, and can you introduce it? Yeah, this is another one off my live record. Uh, this is a, um, a song called Westbound Bart, which uh, I like songs like this. Uh, this is my, my talent is things happening to me, and then I tell you those things. It's quite easy. <laughs> it's my favorite type of song. And this was a sort of a word-for-word -word account of me trying to break my writer's block. I'd had some severe writer's block uh, staying in San Francisco. And uh, a friend of mine told me, he knows I like to write songs based on <coughs> human interaction and sort of weird situations. He said, you got to go to this karaoke night in, in San Francisco at this bar called Amnesia. It's always a bunch of characters. And so I went, and, uh, and he was right, and I had a really nice interaction with uh, a woman who sang Bohemian Rhapsody, Ra Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, and it was one of the best karaoke performances I've ever seen in my life. Maybe one of the best performances. It was, and it wasn't just about her, it was the way the whole room sunk into that. That is the song that is probably the best sing-along of all time, which is so weird because it's so complicated and strange. You wouldn't have thought, but I learned a lot that night. And um, anyway, this is a song about that. On the west bound bar Dove under water in my ears pop in your eyes watered in the mascara ran down your face You looked at me from three rows away as if to say please stop staring at me and so I did and you got off at 16th and Mission Ain't I did too I didn't want it to seem like I was following you It was just the same stop that I was getting off, I swear And you walked on down the streets And I walked behind But she kept on making the same turns That I was gonna make Till finally you stepped in the same bar that I was going to And it was Tuesday night Karaoke and I sang Lay, Lady, Lay With the funny voice and all And they sang Bohemian Rhapsody And everybody sang along Especially on that part That says I sometimes wish I'd never been born at all I went up to tell you just what a great job you had done. You said, I wonder if when Freddie Mercury wrote Bohemian Rhapsody, if he knew it was going to be the ultimate song for karaoke. And I said, what about American Pie? You said, fuck American Pie, our generation cannot identify. We drove my Chevy to the levee. It ain't nothing we compare to. I sometimes wish I'd never been born at all. said, well, that was a great version of Lay, Lady, Lay, with the funny voice and all. Back from Bob Dylan's Nashville skyline days, if I do recall. I said, yeah, you know, I don't normally do this karaoke thing, but if I do, I either sing that song, or everybody must get stoned. Rainy Day Women, number 12 and 35, technically that's what that song's called. I don't know if you knew that, but that's the song title. You said, yeah, what's with that song title? What's with the 12 and 35? I said, well, 12 times 35 is 420. Then you know what they say about 420, but maybe that's just the math nerd in me talking. I don't know what it means. It just does. Yeah, but girl, you know I used to roam around and sing my own songs, play my own guitar. 
But it's been a while since I've been on the road You see I lost my muse And I have not written a song In about a year or so I'm taking a little break My friends call every time that I don't know Yeah, but just today The most amazing thing happened I saw something beautiful And I felt the spark of a brand new song That I have not felt in so long And you said, sing it to me I said, it's not ready to sing Because all I have is the very first line You said, if you don't sing me that first line now There will never be a second line Oh, give me what you got, boy, or else go home I said, okay Here we go Oh, the westbound bark Dove underwater and My ears popped and Your eyes watered in the mascara Ran down your face John Craigie, song's called Westbound Bart from the album Live Opening for Steinbeck. John, it's great to have you here. Yeah, thank How you so are much. Chevys and Levies not relevant these days? <laughs> I don't know. That's what she said. Um, There's Levies still. I guess there Chevys. are. Yeah, I think, she, I think what the reason that spoke to me is that uh, I think she was referring to sort of my generation as having this sort of more existential crisis of, of the internal, you know, sort of this. Uh, um, you know, about sort of being born at all. And um, and I think maybe the other one being sort of more of a 60s kind of like, a, their, that song is more looking outwards at all, sort of their, these people dying. And I don't know, that's I, that's how I read it. And I thought it was, that's what she was going to referring to is that sort of moment that we were all having there. And, uh, but I have had some American Pie people, who, fans who get mad at me for that line. <laughs> Technically, wasn't what I said. It's what she said. You also introduced that song on the album as talking about it being a mathematics major. Yeah, yeah. At UC Santa Cruz. Yeah. And he had a minor in Grateful Dead. <laughs> yeah, though I, I considered it, but uh, you know that math major was very in, in extensive with all of the, um, how do the equations make you feel and stuff like that. Um, yeah, Santa Cruz was a beautiful school. I think they they have gotten a little bit harder. When I was there, though, it was definitely pretty laid back, and math wasn't their uh, their biggest program. So. It was it was a uh, a lot easier than what I've experienced talking to other math majors. In fact, last night, uh, well, yeah, I played a show, uh, <laughs> a Seattle secret show, and after the show, this guy came up to me and he he said, uh, I, I talked about having a math major. He said, "Is pi a prime number?" I said, "I have no idea." <laughs> I said, "Let's say no," and he said, "Okay," <laughs> and then he walked away. So um, I never learned those kinds of things, but I definitely learned about pineapples and. That's math, you know, ferns and pine cones. Really? For real. <laughs> you, what do people talk to you about after your shows? Because, I mean, just from what I've heard on the record, the two live records, I mean, you're pretty dang funny. And Thank I you. wonder what people, like, are probably dying to talk to you to follow up on certain things yeah. you talked about during the show. A lot of follow-ups. I have found mostly what you get is somebody who also wants to be funny, so that they will make a, <laughs> a joke, you know, sort of based off of one of the bits. And I, I, I appreciate that. Um, and then either they want, I think a lot of times they just want to share what I love is they sort of share their experience with the music and, and, um, and, but other times it's really beautiful that they will know, uh, one of the characters in the story, you know, so they'll know someone like TC from the, from the Burning Man story. They'll be like, Oh, I know that guy. I met that guy on my first live album. There's a character named Manise in, uh, on this commune where he wants me to tune to 432 instead of 440. And that's been really fun because he's a real per They're all real people, you know, and, and he's sort of infamous. Uh, he lives out on Maui and and people want to tell me their story. Like, here's my mini story or here's my Jack Johnson story. And I, I love that. I, I love the, the stories, you know, sort of live on beyond me. And I think that's really that's a, and I want to know the I want to know the sequel and the trilogy and, the, yeah. you know, the fourth chapter. So I eat those up. And I think uh, I'm really grateful that people feel comfortable to yeah. talk to me. And then there's the one guy, the elder guy, who had a hearing aid who thought you were saying <laughs> yeah. Birmingham yeah. instead of Burning Man. Yeah. That was great, too. I just played for the first time in, in Birmingham. I opened up for Mary Chapin Carpenter last, yeah, in October. 
and and I got to tell that story. Yeah, where an older gentleman with a hearing aid, he said, uh, he said he always thought it was let's talk this over when we're sober and not in Birmingham. <laughs> I thought that was great. Yeah, yeah. But he's and he's a he's a good guy. He's on the album now, and he he comes to my shows. Uh, he lives up in Northern California, and he's happy to be on the record. Nice. So I think that's really fun for me too. It just builds that community, and uh, I appreciate. No one's ever gotten mad that I that, yeah. I've, that I've called them out. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're a likable guy, and and Thank the you. songs are great, and they, I think you got a a lot of good days ahead of you. Yeah. Do you, you know we got time? Do you want to play one more song? I'll sure. Up. Do you want to play do one more for me? Yeah, let's do it. This uh, is John Craigie. He's going to be in uh, Eugene tomorrow, band on Friday, and Saturday back in Portland where he lives at the Aladdin. I like doing this song uh, when I come to Seattle. This is a song I wrote when I was 27. This is about. Uh, just trying to survive in the music industry and looking up to some of your heroes and realizing that a lot of them didn't. And so the song's called 28. Jim Morrison, Miami County Prison, looking out the window with the barbed wire pen. Singing this same for me This rock and roll scene I should be writing poetry On a farm out in France Cause I can't see through the darkness And I can't feel no pain Seems you lose your spark When you achieve your fame I could start it all over If I could escape If I could only make it To 28 If I could only make it To 28 Oh, 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 oh Yes, and Jane is Joplin, one foot in the coffin, lift that feet of rock, and she walked on out the door. She put her head in her hands. She said, I'll give it all that I can. I dream myself of these fans. I ain't never been this dry before. I'm gonna move out of this Chelsea hotel Stop drinking all the time Stop blowing, let it go in And listening to them whine Cause I know that I am beautiful I will prove it someday If I could only make it to 28 If I could only make it to 28 Oh Oh, 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 oh. Yes, and Kurt Cobain sat in his shed in the rain, stomach full of pain, eyes growing dark. He said, I am losing control. Ought to move down to San Francisco I light candles at all of my shows And switch to acoustic guitars Cause this world, it don't need no more tension and hate It needs a reason for these kids to stand up and create And I could pull this trigger, I could just walk away If I could only make it if I get only make it to 28, if I could only make it, if I could only make it. All right, John Craigie, live in the Roadhouse on KXP. John, thanks so much for coming up. Thanks, man. This is KXB FM Seattle.
Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.